Introduction to Fiction. In this lesson, we will look at what fiction is and what fiction is not <laughs> and the fiction subgenres for editing. Now, fiction is a type of writing that is created solely in the author's imagination. So, fiction is that kind of writing that is not real, right? It's not drawn from um, real life experience. So, the author of a fictional work creates characters, plot lines, dialogues, and sometimes the story setting all from their imagination. So, a fiction book is what is usually called a novel in some sense. But a novel is really just a type or a form of fiction because a novel has a little bit, tiny bit of realism. But anyway, that's for another topic altogether. Okay. Now, the fiction subgenres that we're going to talk about is important because fiction in itself is broad, is amazing, is like a canvas with which we use to correct society. In that sense, and there are eight major genres. You can you can see more, but all of them, all of these eight, encompasses all of the others that you may find in any school of thought. Okay, now, what are fiction's subgenres? So, like fiction on its own is a genre of literature. So, fiction is further broken down into these eight, and they are just differentiated majorly by two things the type of narrative and the way the story is presented okay so that's what defines each of these different kinds of fiction writing each fiction subgenres have specific characteristics so you're going to get to know them and the conventions that distinguish them one from another understanding these subgenres of fiction is so important because as an editor or a proofreader it will guide you in making smart decisions while editing and why you are enhancing a fiction story, especially as a concerns maintaining the integrity of that particular story or that particular genre. Okay, so what will you learn? You will learn what makes up the fiction genre and what the conventions of the different subgenres of fiction are, and how to identify and handle each of them as an editor. <laughs> Backstory. I just laughed a bit because I remember being in English. BSc class and I love to read fiction not even just in the university all my life was from from age seven I was one of those people who were bookworms I read a whole lot of books okay and when I, I began my business in 2009 this particular business of editing and all that interestingly it was one genre that gave me the scare I was like it's very complex um, a lot of people don't know how to properly write fiction in that sense. And I remember an encounter I had in 2012 with a client whose work was barely written, but he was insisting that it was the best thing that's happened and he has written it and he needed it to be edited. But you know, this work had major developmental issues, major rewriting um, aspect that he wasn't excited to work on with me. So usually things like this happen, right? So the client was really bent on not accepting that the job wasn't at par and wasn't, of course, ready to also pay for the work to be done. So I had to let it be. And um, I remember also, <laughs> don't worry, I have stories for years, guys, but I'm going to keep it short. I remember two or three years after that year, he came to me once and asked me, he just popped up on my inbox and asked me oh um editor what what uh, what did you say were wrong with that work and i told him if i remember you know i told him what i thought was where the problem and he said oh you should have listened to me that he went ahead to find the publisher you know what they call publisher they just he just meet the printer and that person becomes publisher and the person printed the work for him and he was so proud of the work and he was sharing it and people who read the work had to tell him like something is wrong this work is not so they were disappointed and it took them to be disappointed and it took him to spend his whole money, <laughs> his money to realize that what I had told him two years prior was the way to go. So anyway, so you're going to, you might encounter things like that, but this exercise will help you to know what to even fix and how to also get the author to agree to the 
editing and revisions you're going to make. Okay. So let's dive right in. Now, like I have said, what differentiate the subgenres are the type of narrative and the way the story is, intended, um, is told. Now, understanding this will help you to know how to handle works like this, which is why I told you the story. Now, fiction is, is expressed in at least eight different categories or subgenres, the way I'm calling them. And they are one, horror fiction, there's historical fiction, three, there's romance fiction, four, there's fantasy fiction, five, there's science fiction, six, there's thriller fiction, seven, there's mystery fiction, and of course, our dear literary fiction. Okay, now, um, example of a literary, okay, let me start with horror fiction. An example is you know, I'm going to try to give very popular examples so that it can, the picture can come to your mind really easily. Um, horror fiction are those kind of stories that are intended to conjure fear, you know, dread and shock. <laughs> okay, so it often involves supernatural elements, you know. It messes with your psychology. It terrorizes you and, you know, it gives you those graphic imageries and all that you know with the things that came the book the books that come directly comes to my mind right now are dracula i mean those are the popular ones dracula now the, the, the ghost stories as well which is a series the ghost stories is also an example of a horror fiction now how do you identify your work that is horror fiction number one it continually has an atmosphere of fear from start to finish fear and of course suspense <laughs> also you're going to have supernatural or you know those kind of monstrous let, let me not call them animals because they are here in neither here or there let me say monstrous elements right in those kind of works as characters you also have them the themes are also always um, exploring things like human fear you know there's only psychological horror like you know what i mean now what are the conventional ways of ensuring uh, that a work that is rooted, that is supposed to be horror fiction, has its elements true to type, right? It must have a tense and airy atmosphere. There must just be that ghost like, ghost bumble, <laughs> this ghost bump like kind of feeling in the descriptiveness of this work. Let, don't let an author tell you, oh, this is how I want it. No, if there are, the conventions don't change, right? They are true to type. You have to create a tense and air, air e -E -R -I -E, means that whole effect you have when you think you have seen a ghost, right? Another convention that is prototype to horror fiction is it has to be graphic imageries. It, you cannot just uh, describe them in a way that can't paint pictures in your mind. It has to, you have to feel like you can see these elements. And it has to be disturbing in a very scary kind of way, right? Another convention for horror fiction is that the themes of the story has to have to be, if the protagonist or someone else has to be running to survive, wanting to survive, trying to escape, you know, that kind of thing that keeps our adrenaline pumping, yes. And then, of course, there has to be vulnerability, so the, proto the protagonist must connect with the reader in a way that the reader will want to save them. You have to be vulnerable. The, the characters have to be vulnerable. And they have to feel this theme of they don't know what next is going to happen. There just has to be a theme of the unknown. It, it is no horror if it doesn't have these conventions. Okay, let's go to the next one. The second one is historical fiction. Of course, like the name is, it has to be set in a specific historical period. So, uh, talking about this now, I have always had an and thought. In fact, I have scribbled down a bit of it, saying I'm going to write, you know, what has happened between um, COVID, lockdown, and present day in my country. But I haven't been able to write it. But that, can, that, that is an absolute sweet setting that needs to be trapped and um, documented for posterity. So that's what I mean by historical fiction. It has to be specific. It has to be specific history of a particular time, and the aim is will always be to portray um, the, that time in accurately. There's no, there is not um, how do I say it? It, you, it's not make believe. Now it's fiction, so it's make believe, but it has to be set 
in a place and time. So it has to be, if you're exploring during travel to space, we have to be able to find out that there was a travel to space in that sense for real. So it has to involve real historical events. It has to involve um, figures, data, settings, and of course, mixed with fictional elements. So that gives you an idea that historical fiction has a little bit of element of reality. Reality, because it's history, it just has to be tangible. You have to be, you have to be able to verify it. Now, what are the characteristics of historical fiction? Like I have said, it has to have authentic historical settings, and the details have to be findable, credible, true, right? Don't forget it's still fiction, okay? <laughs> now, it also has to have real or fictional characters within a historical context. But that timing and everything that happened, whether there was a president, whether there were people, whether there was a war, it has to be real, even though your characters can be imaginative, can be fictional, right? And of course, you heard me, they can also be real. Another characteristic of historical fiction is that it has to blend historical facts with imaginative storytelling. I mean, I was already saying that, getting to that point before now. Now, it has also conventions that are static that cannot change. Nobody's going to write historical fiction when it doesn't have these elements. One, it has to come from an extensive research and have accurate historical representations. So even though it's make-believe, you must situate it at a time, place, verifiable place and time and people. Very important. It also has to have historical events and the social norms and cultures of that time. It has to have, so you have to feel like you were living. As you read the book, you have to feel like you were living at that time and you have to feel like you understand what that era, living in that era feels like. Also, thirdly, it has to have dialogue and behavior that is consistent with that time period. <laughs> you cannot set historical fiction and your and one of your elements of time is mentioning something that is so post-COVID or something that is in the internet age. Maybe when your history is talking about maybe in 1943, and then let's say, for instance, one of your characters or themes is talking about mobile phone. It's not consistent. Right, so it has to be the dialogues, what the characters are saying, and their behaviors has to be consistent with that time period. Okay, some of the books that come to mind easily that are examples of historical fiction are Gone with the Wind, you remember, and you will know the second one very well Half of a Yellow Sun by <laughs> Chimamanda Adichie is a historical fiction. Okay, now the third one is Romance. This ought to be. Not odd. This is the most popular kind of fiction. And I, and I dare say the most sold out. <laughs> People that have explored this fiction are major authors like Jane Austen. I remember I, re I have read Jane Austen's Emma, Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibilities, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. All of those books are romance fiction. Talking about them just makes me want to go back to read them. And of course I should. So romance fiction centers on the themes of romantic relationships and, of course, the emotional journey of the characters that are involved. It, it uh, focuses on themes of love, relationships, and personal growth. All right? And what are the major characteristics? Like I've said already, it focuses on romantic relationships. There has to be emotional and personal growth of characters there is always supposed to be a happy ending. If it's not happy, a happily ending, <laughs> it's not romance fiction. And it has to ha also have an optimistic ending in a way that by the time the story is ending, the reader is excited for the characters. You know what I mean? Um, expecting them to go out and be the best, resolve to know that they are cool. Now, there are also conventions that do not change. So you must look out for them or ensure that they are in, in your writings as an editor. Like I have also mentioned, number one convention is that a romantic fiction must have the development of a romantic relationship as a central plot. It can be a subplot 
um, the major character and the major villain or the major all has to be part of this romantic relationship. It has to be the big story, the big picture of the story. Okay. Now, the second thing is that there has to be obstacles, challenges, misunderstanding between characters. You know, that those kind of misunderstandings that finally when they are resolved, the love is so sweet. <laughs> it has to be. The third convention is that the ending, the resolution has to be so emotional, so satisfying. It has to be. If not, you have to make sure that it is incorporated in this work to be a perfect romance fiction. Number four is fantasy. Fantasy fiction, uh, the kind of fiction that involves magical elements, imaginary words, creatures, mythical creatures, magical powers, epic quest, in search of things that most times is not true to type, is not true to reality. They are characterized by magical and supernatural elements as characters. It is always set in imaginary worlds and or alternative realities, you know, where these characters live. And of course, there is always a quest an epic quest for something or a battle between good and evil, it has to be there. The conventions for a fantasy fiction has to be that there is detailed setting or world building that has unique rules and laws. In that story, the setting or the environment where these characters live will have strict, unique rules and laws that will put everybody on their toes to meet up with. The second convention for a fantasy fiction is that there has to be a heroic journey or a heroic quest to get something done or to be rewarded in that sense. Third convention for a fantasy fiction is that there has to be presence of mystical characters and magical beings. It has to be. Example of fantasy fiction that readily comes to my mind are of course, the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rollins. They're a fantastic example of fantasy fiction. Okay, so the fifth one is sci-fi. Our dear sci-fi. Science fiction. Science fiction is um, that kind of fiction that talks about things that are going to happen in the future. It always talks about projections of the, of the future world, of the future world, scientific inventions in the future, technological advancement. Those are the themes usually for science fiction. It always explores speculative concepts. You have to be things that are projected, that could happen, you know, projected to happen. So, uh, like I've said already, advanced technology it could be things about space exploration, alternative life in the space, time travel, yeah, all of that. So characteristics, like I've said, are uh, it has to have futuristic and speculative settings. The world building for science fiction is always the world that have not existed yet. Okay. Secondly, it must have advanced technology or scientific concepts as major, major, major themes and plots. Now, there also has to be exploration of societal and ethical implications in a way that when you're projecting for these futuristic things, there has to be a little bit of challenges with meeting up with what it already is in society, what is ethical with all of those, and to challenge that whole speculation and advanced technology implications in that sense. Now, there are certain conventions that must also be before something can be classified as sci-fi. It has to have detailed world building. The world has to be set in details. There are no fluffs, no shallow detailing. It has to be detailed. There also has to be consistent scientific logic. It has to make sense, right? It has to make sense and it has to continue. It has to be reasonable. So whether it is how human beings may not be able to die anymore, it has to show how into the future in a way that is believable, <laughs> that is reasonable. Another convention is that sci-fi must have themes that are explorations driven, that has to do with discovery, that has to do with your known. Okay, an example of sci-fi one of the ones i read back in school was invisible man quite a good read by hg wells another sci-fi book is the problematic paradox by sapping field at all and so many thousands and thousands of other books all right so let's go to thriller fiction 
Thrillers are characterized by excitement. It has to be palpable excitement. It has to have suspense and high stakes. They often involve a protagonist who is in danger and trying to race against time. And there will always be unexpected twists. So the characteristics are so clear. Thrillers has to be fast-paced, action-driven in storytelling. It ha the storytelling has to, the plot has to be action-driven, fast-paced, and all that. The second characteristic of thriller fiction is that there must be high stakes. There must be something that must give. <laughs> there has to be tension, right? There also has to be plot twist. The reader should not be able to see what is going to happen next or predict what is going to happen next. And of course, this is also the fiction where you have a lot of cliffhangers. We must be panting like, oh my God, what is going to happen next? That feeling has to be there to be thriller. Okay, example of thrillers, there are lots of them, but Pretty Girls comes to mind by Karen Slaughter. And another one I remember is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sedja. So there are lots of these kind of books and I love them personally as well. Now, the seventh kind of fiction or subgenre of fiction is mystery. Mystery fiction involves a suspenseful plot. There has to be a lot of suspense centered on a crime. Pay attention. It has to be centered on a crime or a puzzle that needs to be solved. It is only mystery when there is crime or a puzzle, a nagging puzzle that needs to be solved. Now, the protagonist in a mystery fiction is usually a detective or an amateur investigator or a spy. So it has to be. These are the characteristics of, of mystery fiction. There has to be central mystery or a crime that needs to be solved. Mention that again. There has to be clues also and red herrings. You reading it can tell that, oh my God, you know, like you should give the characters clue on how to get that resolved. Then there's also supposed to be suspense and tension a lot. A lot of suspense and tension. An example of a mystery fiction that comes to mind is Gone Girl. Gone Girl by Gillian Fling is one example. Another one is um, One of Us is Lying, yeah, by Karen McManus. One of Us is Lying is a good example of mystery fiction. Gone Girl is another one and several others. Okay. Now, number eight. We are literary fiction now, <laughs> which I think is kind of um, one of the most popular kind of fiction, right? This kind of fiction focuses on style, depth, character development, rather than plot. Sometimes you can't even tell the storyline of a literary fiction. You just can't tell, okay, so this is happening, this event leads to this. But you're going to see a lot of style, linguistic styling. It's almost like that literary work that is flirting with words. You know, but it has a lot of depth as well and deep character development. It often explores complex themes and is considered more serious and or artistic compared to its subgenre. Now, the characteristics of its literary fiction is it emphasizes on character development a lot and a lot of introspection. It also focuses on complex multi-layered themes a lot of themes on top of each other so there are different things happening at different times and the characters are deeply understood and the reader feels like they are part of the character's lives it also has a rich and evocative language the, ex the expressions are clear and bold right and also another characteristic is that in literary fiction it has open endings or sometimes ambiguous endings but it has quite open endings that you're not going to be saying, oh, there are no cliffhangers, there are no suspense in that sense, but it ends in a way that you can feel like, okay, there's a resolution and all that. Remember, there's usually not a clear plot, so it's just complex, but it keeps you glued to the characterization and all that. Now, there are conventions that makes for a literary fiction. Number one, there are a lot of use of symbolism a metaphor in literary fiction. There, are, there is also often slower pace. Only the de description of each character takes pages. <laughs> pages is slow in pacing. You know, it doesn't move fast. You know, and also it focuses on internal conflicts 
and moral dilemma. So the protagonists are always introspective, thinking, okay, should they have done this? Should they take the right decision? How do they handle people in their lives? So there's a lot of that. Now, a good example of literary fiction, in fact, there's an author who has it, like, understands it, just like Jane Austen um, understands romance fiction. George Orwell understands literary fiction, and of course, and many other people. So he wrote 1984, An Animal Farm. I chose the ones that you can you can also relate with. And of course, we I also read Great Expectations in School by Charles Dickens. That's another kind of literary fiction, and there are multitudes and millions of them as well. Understanding these fiction subgenres along with their characteristics and conventions, I'm sure it has given you like a template to effectively edit any of them. So right now, you know what you're looking out for. As an editor, you must religiously respect these specific elements that they have in order to maintain every story's integrity and its appeal to the target reader. With these sub you are better equipped to guide your clients or your author clients, of course, who have written fiction so that they know exactly what they are up to, right? A good fiction makes the heart merry. <laughs> you will help them also to preserve the unique aspects of their fiction. And more so, you'll be able to know how to charge appropriately for this kind of work. Okay, because of course, understanding where they fall in helps you understand the, the work involved and your ability to deliver excellently and the time frame you need and all of that. Okay, so let's go to what your role as a fiction editor is.